Uh, you're very welcome to this uh, webinar for us to talk through the new judgment within the ILAX framework focusing on care leavers. Um, my name is Jeremy Gladden. I am a senior HMI working in social care policy um, here at Ofsted. I have the sort of framework and policy lead for all matters local authority and I'm the sort of custodian of the, the ILAX uh, um, framework. So we are here this morning to talk to you about ILAX, the Inspection of Local Authority Children's Services, and the outcome of our consultation earlier this year, where we proposed to introduce a new judgment, a standalone judgment, around the experience and progress of care leavers. Um, this is what I propose to cover over the next 30 or 40 minutes or so. Um, a little bit around the background and the history of how we got to where we are to set uh, this in context. I want to talk a bit about what we consulted on and what you and others uh, fed back to us as part of that consultation. Um, and then to talk a bit about the inspection arrangements and the implications of the changes that, that, that we are making. Um, and then into next steps, which talks about uh, our implementation, uh, et cetera. So let me start with, with the background. Um, you, I'm sure, will, uh, will recall that we, we, we published ILAX towards the age, end of 2017 and implemented it from January 2018. And in designing the ILAX, ILAX framework, we were very keen to do something significantly different to what had gone before. Um, the inspection regime for local authority children's services has always historically been a one size fits all uh, event. Um, we, we've had a number of frameworks, which at the point of publication um, always worked on the assumption that everyone would be inspected within three years. And after three years, the cycle would, would repeat. What happened over several frameworks was firstly, it often took us four years to complete, and to date, no, no framework ever repeated. Four years on, the world had moved on uh, politically uh, in, in terms of uh, you know, the, the presiding government, their, their priorities, etc. And of course, practice moves on in that, in that time as well. So what we tried to design with ILAX was something that was more of a system of inspection than simply a, a one size fits all. We were very keen to, to introduce something that was much, much more risk based and proportionate um, to the local authority children's services sector. So it, it became um, uh, something that had uh, several aspects to it than a, than a single inspection. We, had, we have had now for four years activity outside of inspection and a range of inspection type activity, uh, all of which has provided a, you know, a package. So outside of inspection, we've asked each local authority to submit uh, a self-evaluation, which we continue to be very grateful for your doing that. And um, we haven't used any of our powers to require you to do that. We, that, that that's happened by consent. Uh, and, and I think that's been largely very successful. Um, and it's certainly very helpful where you focus your self-evaluation, as the framework says, around those three, three questions. You know, what do you know about the quality of um, the quality and impact of practice with children and families? And in, in the context of what we're talking about today, uh, you know, the quality and impact of practice with care leavers. Um, uh, how do you know that? Question two. And what are you doing about that um, as, a, as, a, as a result? Question three. Um, so that, that's the self-evaluation. And then we use that as the basis for our annual engagement uh, meetings uh, with the local authority, um, as, the, as it says on the tin, and annually. Um, in addition to, and this is the fourth sub-bullet here, um, the, the fourth sub-bullet is we continue to have a three yearly inspection where we make a judgment on the, uh, the Ofsted four point scale. But what we put in between was something called focused visits. So 
two inspectors for two days looking at a particular part of the service or, or a cohort of children. And they were designed to try and ensure that um, we, could, we could assist and narrate um, each local authority's improvement journey outside of having to make a graded judgment. And, and those of you who were around in 2018 would have heard myself and other colleagues talking about that notion of putting something in place to catch before they fall. And, and I think that there, there are several examples over the last few years uh, where a focused visit has very, very helpfully gone in and identified uh, areas of weakness or areas of potential weakness. We've been able to report publicly on that, hold the local authority to account, and most importantly, give them the time before their next judgment inspection to do the necessary re remedial work. Uh, I suppose the last thing to say about uh, the ILAX uh, framework is that you know, in, in the spirit of being risk-based and proportionate, um, the judgment inspection is different depending on your previous uh, in, inspection outcome. So for those who were previously inadequate or requires improvement to be good, uh, they get a two week standard inspection. And for those who were previously good or outstanding, it's a, it's a one week short inspection. Uh, of course, the whole world uh, has been delayed by the, by the global pandemic, uh, COVID-19 delayed uh, the ILAX uh, as we'd intended back in um, March 2020, the then Secretary of State uh, requested a, a cessation of, of, of all inspection. So we were three or four months without any form of inspection. And over the next sort of year or so, as we got in towards uh, mid-2021, uh, we were doing something slightly different in the sort of assurance visit um, at space. But we're now absolutely uh, back, back on track. Uh, and indeed, um, as we sit here now, almost at the end of 2022, we are now in a position where every local authority in England is sitting on at least one uh, ILAX uh, judgment uh, and, and, and no local authority is, is sitting on a, uh, on a, on a, on a SIF judgment, the old, the old framework. So just a, just a very brief reminder of what ILAX looks like in terms of judgments uh, over the, its four year life to date. Obviously we make an overall effectiveness judgment and that is informed by uh, the experience and progress of children in need of health protection. Currently the experience and progress of children in care and care leavers and thirdly the the impact of leaders uh, on um, so uh, the impact of leaders on social work practice with children and and families. Uh, I just want to very briefly um, talk about that, that final judgment, the, the leadership judgment. In previous frameworks, we talked tended to inspect leadership management. And, and the shift that we made here is, is very much about looking at the impact of leaders on practice to make a, a clear and explicit link between the activities and the priorities of leaders, leaders at all levels of the organization on those two practice judgments around children in need of help and protection children and children in care and care, care leavers. Um, you may also recall more recently uh, that earlier this year we published our um, research, Ready or Not, Care Leavers' Views of Preparing to Leave Care. Now, what, what this research did was to set out the views of children in care aged 16 and 17 and, and those who had already left care um, and, and, and we gathered those views by the means of some direct conversations with children and young people and also through, through a, um, a survey. And what that identified and was really quite stark in identifying is that despite the recognition of the importance of preparing children to leave care, some important things uh, you know, were not always being put in place for children. And um, so for example, telling care leavers about the, the support available to them, helping them to stay in touch with, with those people who are most important to, to them, and working with them to ensure that they have the skills that they need before moving on. Now, 
this piece of research um, uh, was really influential in, in what we then decided to do. But I have to say, it wasn't the only lever that, that, that led us to, to consult on a, on a discrete, separate judgment around care levers. Uh, there were lots of noises from young people themselves, from, from the wider sector, from those organisations who exist to support and advocate for, for care leavers, and indeed some noises from government um, as, as well about questioning um, whether or not we got the focus as sharp and as bright as it could be um, on, on care leavers. So that, that led us to our, our consultation, um, and I'll say a bit more about that. Um, I think I've kind of kind of covered this. So we, we reflected on our, our, our research uh, and, and what that told us uh, about the experience and progress of care leavers. We, we listened to representations from, from care leavers themselves and from those wider groups that I've just described. And, and we concluded that, that the embedding of, of our evaluation of the experiences and progress of care, leader, care leavers within that wider children in care and care leavers judgment hadn't, hadn't maximized the profile of care leavers to the extent that we, we had intended. Um, so we decided that, that now was the time, you know, almost four years on, as we got towards the end of the first cycle uh, of judgment inspections, to consult on, on introducing a separate judgment uh, specifically around care leavers. Um, and uh, and um, so, so, so we did do that. And, and you know, the key, the key facet of that, of that consultation was that we would introduce uh, a new judgment called the experience and progress of care leavers. Um, we also proposed that we would review and update the existing evaluation criteria uh, that currently sat within the children care and care leavers judgment, but extrapolate that out and, and refresh that so that it was, it was the most up-to-date description of what, of what uh, good looks like um, for those either preparing to leave care or, or who, who had left care. And then the third thing that we consulted on was, um, was it, when, when was the right time to introduce that? Um, we, we felt um, the right time was, was when every local authority what, had had an ILAX judgment. It, it wasn't possible to quite time that, that everybody sat on exactly one, um, but but you know um, we 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 felt that the beginning of uh, of the next uh, calendar year in January 2023 felt like a you know, a good moment um, to do that. Um, we ran the the the, the public consultation uh, between those dates in June and July, and then after that we continued to meet with um, stakeholders to to help us iterate how we were responding. Um, to the, the you know the really valuable feedback that we we received from you during the consultation. So I'm going to move on to the outcome of the consultation now. Um, the the online survey that we ran in June and July, we received 141 responses, um, some of which were from individuals, others which were from organisations, uh, which represented many many other in, in individuals and, and, and you know, there, there, there's an example there uh, at the beginning the national leaving care benchmarking forum um, uh, with whom I had the great pleasure uh, to, to to spend some time with last week at their at their national conference uh, and their submission included a survey of 46 responses from from care leavers uh, we spoke directly to, to, to young people and to or those organizations that represent the interests uh, of children and young people. There were a number of academics and researchers who, who were keen to talk to us from their, their particular specialist uh, academic social work perspective. Um, and of course, we, we spoke to the sector. So representatives of local authority children's services, uh, including directors of children's services through 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 our our, our regular 
um, consultation with um, ADCS, etc. Et uh, and then, then we had a range of, of, of letters and emails that were that, that were sent to us, you know, d directly with with individuals' views, etc. Um, the headlines around that first proposal, and that's the, the the basic proposal to introduce the judgment, was that you know the greatest majority of people, 131, agreed. Um, eight respondents neither agreed nor disagreed, and and two two disagreed. Um, I'll say a little bit more on those two in just a in just a moment. Um, but but the overwhelming um, support that we received for these proposals, uh, you know, were hung around things like it will really give care leavers a more prominent voice in the in the inspection that it, that, that it will help inspectors give a clear give clearer and more specific findings about the experience and progress of of care leavers um, and as a kind of added on bonus um, what you told us was that you felt this would encourage local authorities to respond to and prioritize um, uh, uh, care leavers you know as as a, as a priority um, group the, the 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 feedback from the proposal invited us to think hard about our use of language and we have thought long and hard um, about that uh, last Friday, the 2nd of December, we we republished the ILAX framework. And with that, we published our consultation response documents. And in there, you know, we were very clear to say um, that, that we've listened to uh, uh, the views of those who support care leavers and care leavers themselves, that in many ways they prefer to be referred to as care experienced young people. What 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 our what our um, executive board and chief inspector decided was that our framework should continue to use the language of statute and statutory guidance uh, for clarity around care leavers, but when we're describing the experience and progress uh, of those care leavers in our reports, uh, then we should use that you know the language of care experienced young people within our reporting. And that, 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 that's what we will be doing uh, moving forward into the new year. And actually, if you look back at inspection reports over the last, I would say, nine months or so, increasing, there has been a shift in the way that we've used language, um, you know, which, which, which aligns with, with this approach. Um, the, 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 those two that disagreed with, with this proposal um, really wanted to guard against care leaving services being seen as separate from the wider children's services and a fear that we might compartmentalize uh, children and young people and not recognize that, that that journey that young people go on through their care experience into their you know their their, their post care experience and, and i suppose that's really where we where we landed the framework when we published at the beginning of 2018. Um, and our reflection is, as I said a moment ago, that hasn't shine, shone as bright a light uh, on the experience and progress of care leaves uh, as we would like to. So we're really mindful of that, of that uh, you know, potential risk. Um, but, but you know, where we've landed it is with the majority that this is the, this is the right thing to do. Our second proposal was around the the ev evaluation cr criteria, and we thought long and hard when we crafted the, uh, the the consultation proposals whether or not to make this an open question, or whether or not to spend time crafting uh, evaluation criteria to consult on. Um, where where we landed this, uh, and, and we we you know we talked with a number of. Uh, colleagues both internally and externally about the the relative benefits was um, we didn't want people to get get hung up in 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 particular wording what we really wanted them to do was to share with them to share with us what 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 you feel you know is the, is the most important aspects of what a good service uh, you know for care leavers would would be um, 
and and you did that you did that really really helpfully and, and i suppose the headline from your feedback is that we should all be incredibly ambitious for those young people leaving care and those who have have left care um and and, and much of what you told us uh, or and the wider respondents group told us was important um actually was already part of the existing evaluation criteria um and 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 many of the changes that that that, that we've weaved in there and that you know um respondents said were important reflected changes to government guidance uh, and sort of research findings that have emerged you know over the life of the four years of of I, I, ILAX, all of which i think has made it relatively straightforward uh, for us to ensure that the you know the range of suggestions made to us have, have you know almost all been explicitly included um you know within what is now the published new um evaluation cri criteria um in the um response to the consultation report which as i say we published last friday we've given further summary uh, uh, you know detail within there uh, what i want to flag to you here is um we uh, as as we've done in in all the the judgment areas within ILAX is we we we've we've marshaled those evaluation criteria under a series of 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 sub subheadings um and that one two three four seven um sub bullets that that you see there uh, are the headings that we've that we've marshaled um our evaluation criteria under they look very similar to what sat um, in the old children in care and care leavers judgment, but they have been finessed. Certainly, the, the third one around the local offer is is new um, and and explicit. You know, I think I think the importance of the local offer was always implicit before, but we've made that um, you know quite explicit now. Jeremy, just so we've got our first question come in, which was to ask how inspectors will test the impact of the local offer. Right. OK. Um, good, good question. Um, and and I, I think I just said, um, although we've now made it explicit, it was implicit um, before. Um, so I think inspectors uh, are all, have already been looking at, at the local offer. And I've certainly heard inspectors talking about yeah, impressive offers that that are really that are really clear and and helpful and assist um, young people and those that frankly are 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 less less helpful less specific um, and one inspector even descri described to me this didn't go into a report as a rather mean uh, offer so I I think we have a you know a sharp view as to as to what what that local offer will be in terms of how we will evaluate that. Um, some of that is about before we before we come on site, accessing that local offer, seeing you know, what it has to say through the lens of the potential user. So the the young person preparing to leave care or or has left care, is this something that is that is helpful, that is specific, that is going to either describe what young people's rights and entitlements to, to 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 different types of support is, and or does it does it um, does it signpost you know young people as to as to where that will be, uh, and was with all our uh, inspection activity, um, we won't take that as a as a red. We would then triangulate that through our conversations with children and young people, through our conversations with social workers, with personal advisors. You know, as those those there to to help and support um, those those leaving care, um, and, and of course in young people's records and and their pathway plans to see if we can see the the, the local offer translated into individual young young people's plans as well. Um, but but you know the the main point I'd want to say here is that we triangulate from a number of sources before we we would then. Uh, arise at a finding as to how 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 effective uh, and, and what the quality of a local offer is. Moving on to the third proposal, uh, and that that was that we introduced it from January two thousand and twenty three. Again, the greatest majority 
agreed, that there was a substantial minority that, that, that disagreed, and another substantial minority who neither agreed nor, nor disagreed. Um, there, was, there was a concern that we should introduce the judgment um, soon, you know, the sooner the better, uh, so that we, we continue to be a lever in, in uh, supporting the improvement uh, of services in that in that timely kind of a, a way, um, I think actually doing that in this this January is probably the soonest we could we could have achieved that. Uh, so so you know we we're pleased to do that. Um, others talking about it, you know is is it fair and sensible to do this after all local authorities have been in, in, inspected under the current ju judgment structure, and there, there was broad broad agreement you know about about that um, and i'll say a little bit more about that in a, in a moment let me say a little bit about about the concerns so th there were some concerns about whether or not there was sufficient time to prepare for the new new arrangements um, and i think what's important here is that much of what we've included in the evaluation criteria was already there within the ILAX framework and I would say there is nothing in that uh, evaluation criteria, which which is ambitious, but there's nothing in there I think that should come as a surprise, um, you know, to to local authorities, um, and um, certainly they they do reflect changes changes in uh, government guidance and you know uh, the you know the current research uh, thinking etc. Um, secondly, there was a view that we should. Um, consult separately on the criteria itself. Um, I've alluded to this already that we contemplated that back in the early summer, um, but we really wanted to give the opportunity for that kind of blank sheet of paper for people to be able to talk about what was most important to them. That proved to be really helpful uh, to to others, um, and and you know it, it really assisted us to revise that criteria. And, and we also have been through a process. With a range of stakeholders, you know, to 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 look at those at some early iterations of those criteria to make sure we get those those in the right place, and that that's led us to a, to a confidence that we've that, that we've achieved that. Um, and then thirdly, here, Ofsted should introduce the judgment after other sector developments, for example, um, you know, the government's response to the care review, um, and and you know, we we understand that. And I think there's an awful lot in the last few months um, of of things being being paused pending the outcome of the of the care review. Um, uh, we decided not to do that, but to press ahead for some of those reasons that I've already um, alluded to. We know the implementation of the the care review will have implications for for inspection. Myself and other colleagues are in regular conversations with with government uh, particularly with dfe um around this uh, and we do anticipate that you know over time there will be the necessity to review the inspection framework but we didn't want to delay this really important initiative for care leavers uh, any any longer than we than we possibly could um, so that's that's why we decided to go ahead that doesn't mean that we won't need to review things as as we move forward, because because we know, but we because we know we will. A um, few thoughts about um, other matters from the consultation. Um, clearly, we'll change um, children in care judgment. So that that's that's now simply says the experience and progress of children in care, um, and and we've removed or extrapolated those references to care leavers from from that judgment. Um, important to say. We have left within there, um, within those descriptions of uh, the experience and progress of children in care, the importance of preparing children who are 16 and 17 who will leave care, uh, making sure that they're as well prepared to leave care as as possible. Um, we will judge that through through the new the new judgment, but it felt right to leave that in the criteria for children in care as well. And, and the other thing that we did, we made an addition to uh, one of the criteria in the impact of leaders uh, uh, judgment. And that was, frankly, a, a something that should have been there 
all along. When we talk about you know, effective organisational support for the training and professional development of, we talked about social workers and other practitioners, we didn't name check personal advisors, and, and, and we should have done, and, and we, we've rectified that um, now moving forward. Jeremy, there's a question on that that point. Um, that can we give some examples of what we mean by effective organisational support for personal advisors? Yeah, and, and I don't think it's hugely different to other practitioners working in the field, so social workers, um, etc. Et I think I think we know that um, the, the 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 factors that make practitioners, which includes personal advisors, as effective as possible. Is, um, is a manageable caseload so that they're able to provide the, you know, the, 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 the necessary support to those, those young people that, 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 that are on their caseload. Um, so, so, so manageable caseloads are really important. The quality of supervision that they receive um, should be as frequent and as, as good quality um, uh, as, as other practitioners, including, including social workers. Um, and, and their learning and development offer um, is, 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 is just as in, in, important. So I don't, in answer to the question, Chris, I don't think I'm talking about anything outside of what we'd expect for social workers and other practitioners, but I think you know, to explicitly include them within that, um, you know, for personal advisors. Um, and, and that's where explicit, explicitly mentioning them in the criteria for the leadership judgment, um, I, 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 I hope we'll, we will see that better reflected for personal advisors you know in 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 future reporting let me move on to talk about inspection arrangements um, so um, many of you will be aware that at the point when we serve notice for an ILAX inspection or indeed a focused visit we have something called annex a which is the um, the information that we ask for for inspectors to be able to review prior to coming on on site, uh, it helps them derive and narrow down their their lines of in inquiry. Um, so list nine um, is being uh, renamed uh, from care leavers to leaving care services um, within an Annex A and the child le uh, level data lists. We are adding those eligible children so those children are still that who remain looked after children aged 16 or 17 but will become care, care leavers into the scope of 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 list nine uh, and we're also asking for some further information because we think it will assist us so we want to to know which care leavers are um uh currently or former unaccompanied asylum seeking uh, children. We want to know the the information about the allocated personal advisor, uh, the latest pathway plan re review date, and the latest contact uh, with between the the young person and and the personal advisor. Um, we we have published some guidance uh, about providing data for each of these fields, and. And we have committed, um, as we have done previously when we've made changes in what, what we're asking for, that we will work really flexibly with you and to any data colleagues who are, you know, who are listening to this webinar, you know, do as you often do, do give us a ring, um, uh, you know, ahead of an inspection or, you know, outside of inspection, if you'd like to talk about to, to either uh, you know, to one of our, our data specialists around around that. But you know, once we've announced an inspection, if if your information um, or, or the way that you capture this data um, is is still a bit clunky because you you know you haven't you know it, the, the, your 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 data systems are not easily producing this information, then we'll want to flex with you on that and um, and make sure that you can provide us that information in the format that works for you. And if that means flexing some timescales, et cetera, you know, we, we will talk to our lead inspectors um, about how, how we make that, how we make that um, happen. Um, another one around um, Annex A, um, the, the, the section around management information where we're looking for strategic information, for planning information, commissioning information, et cetera. Um, we decided not to separate um, 
what is currently the Children in Care and Care Leavers list into two lists, um, it, it, it didn't feel it, that, that, it, that it would add, add value. Um, they, they, they work, that works currently well in its current format. Uh, so we've left that as, as it is. Um, we, we have made some amendments to some of the existing items to make it clear where that request should cover both children in care and care leavers. You know, and you know, I, 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 I want to reinforce that we're not, we've never anticipated that you would ha have documentation that absolutely matches our descriptions within Annex A. It's your best evidence to be able to 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 assist us to understand, you know, um, in those in in those headings that we that that, that we give you. Um, there are some specific additions. So uh, we have added personal advisors to the request relating to caseloads, and that that links to my answer to the to the to the earlier question. And we've also added to the request for information about how you and the local authority support foster carers to enable young people to stay put. Um, so that's, you know, what is your, what is your strategic approach to enabling uh, young people to remain staying put with their foster carers, where that's in their best interests, obviously. So what does this mean for, for field work? Well, um, we, we, over the time, similar time that we were consulting, we, we did quite a, um, quite a, a really helpful uh, research piece around our recent evident bases, ev evidence bases to determine whether inspections that have happened in the last few months gathered sufficient evidence to make this new, new judgment, even though they weren't required to. And, and, and what we concluded was that we, we did, did have sufficient evidence in most cases and we don't we did, we're not making any changes to the methodology or the um, you know the numbers of inspectors etc for, for our two week standard inspections for our focused visits or for our monitor, monitoring visits um, and, and for focused and monitoring visits that's those that's those visits that you know have have care leavers as a as a focus uh, as it, uh, as it were however in the one week short inspection this is where we are making a temporary change so on the first occasion when we make this new judgment the experience and progress of of care leavers on a short inspection um, we think inspectors may need to look with a, a greater level of depth and, and and breadth of evidence in order to make that that judgment first time out and you will recall that in the framework the the what we what we talk about on a short inspection is inspectors starting from a, a position that this is a good or outstanding authority. That's why we can do a short inspection. And we ask inspectors to look at whether, whether the performance has been maintained or, or indeed improved, or, or perhaps in some, some cases, you know, reduced or, 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 or worsened. Um, it, it, it's very difficult to make a, a first time judgment in that, in that kind of context. So what we've decided is that for the next round of short inspections, um, each, each inspection will have two further HMI days during the fieldwork period. Um, that won't be um, an inspector for two days purely looking at the experience and progress of care leavers. We will use that additional resource to, to increase our capacity and continue with the fidelity of the model that all inspectors inspect across the entire scope of the of the inspection so for a couple of days um i imagine that'll be either a tuesday wednesday or wednesday thursday i think it'll be mostly a tuesday wednesday there will be um, an additional inspector um on site working with 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 the rest of the team um briefly want to touch on some other amendments that we've made to the framework which aren't associated Necessarily with the the new well, well they're not associated with the new the new care leavers judgment but this feels like a good moment to flag them and um, we've made it um, ex again explicitly clear that um, uh, those young people presenting age sixteen or seventeen as homeless 
you know, the, 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 the importance of their being subject to a joint accommodation assessment um, are absolutely in scope of the, of the, of the framework. Um, they were always in scope. Um, we didn't explicitly say so. We've added that in explicitly now. The, the second thing that we've done, we've made it clear that when inspectors are evaluating the experience and progress of individual children, that, that they will consider the extent to which the local authority complies with its relevant legal duties under the, under the Equality Act. Um, and again, that was implicit before, but important to make that explicit. Um, and then the final piece is, um, is around the Annex A request for the local authority use and monitoring of children in unregulated provision. Uh, we'd previously been asking for a kind of snapshot in time. Uh, what we're now asking for is uh, the use of such provision in the six months prior to inspection. Um, it's become increasingly apparent that it's important for us not only to be able to talk about any children in unregulated provision at that moment in time, but to understand the recent trend, you know, and what that's been about um, uh, as, as well. Moving on and making sure that we leave time for, for further questions. Uh, next steps, briefly. So we are introducing, and you'd have read this last Friday if you saw our publication, we are introducing this new judgment on shortened standard inspections. It means that the, the uh, grade profile will now look uh, that, like this, with three practice judgments and the impact of leaders all, all, all coming together to, to formulate the overall effectiveness judgment. Um, the revised um, evaluation criteria will inform focus visits uh, looking at the experience and progress of care, care leavers. That's not a change, it's just, just to be clear, you know, the new criteria will, will be, you know, what inspectors will use when they, they're doing the, the care leaver topic um, um, focus visit. And, 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 and importantly, and we did this around the initial implementation of ILAX, we will be looking uh, to review the implementation of the changes during the next calendar year, I don't think we'll start that for six months because we'll need to get a, you know, a body of evidence to work with. Um, but certainly a lot of my time and my immediate colleagues, Chris, who sat opposite me particularly, um, towards the back end of, of next year, we will looking, be looking to review the implementation of this, this significant change, the introduction of the new care leavers judgment and, and, and making any amendments necessary um, to the framework. That brings us to two questions. Um, let me look to Chris. Is there, have we any any questions in that uh, I can immediately respond to? Yes, so we've got two questions in. Um, one isn't specifically related to this, but is relevant to ILAX generally. It's, okay. How will the overall judgment take account of the additional pressures on local authorities presented by the current situation with unaccompanied asylum seeking children? Okay, let me let me take that one first. Well, um, Clearly, it, it, it has some links to what we've been talking about, because I know that in many local authorities, their care leaving population has a much increased um, proportion of young people who came to this country, who became looked after children because they were in a country of asylum seeking children. Um, so that, that's something that we need to, that, that of course, we, we, will, we will take account of. Um, when we're evaluating the experience and progress of, of, of both children in care and, and care leavers. Um, on on the, the, the point about the, the increased pressures, um, what we uh, uh, and I, on behalf of Ofsted, um, are currently involved, uh, along with my director, Yvette Stanley, um, in, in discussions with cross-government departments, including the DfE, the Home Office, um, etc and the sector so that's the lga adcs etc um looking at the response not only to the immediate response to unaccompanied asylum seeking children at their point port, port of entry and 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 you know the the urgency by which those increasing numbers of young people need to be swiftly transferred to their new corporate parent and what the arrangements should look like 
in that in that interim period, um, we're, we're, uh, and, and looking at the increased numbers and the pressure on the system, and how that relates to the wider sufficiency of placements, etc. Et, et and, and I think it's probably fair to say that 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 ongoing conversation between ourselves, the sector, and government has characterised this as a crisis. You know. Um, like like the pandemic was was a crisis, um, and so we are working alongside the sector and government uh, in terms of how to respond to that crisis, so so that inspection can take account of that of that context. Um, that might not be the neatest answer that, that that you were hoping for, but what I want to leave you with the assurance of is that we are alongside policymakers within government and yourselves within the sector, making sure we understand how you are uh, looking to uh, access, for example, houses of multiple occupancy and or independent schools places or mothballed children's homes. You know, it's, there's a lot of imaginative, uh, creative thinking in this, this space at the moment. We're absolutely alongside it so that when we're on inspection, uh, on inspection uh, we're able to make our judgments and our findings in the reality of that of that context. And we've had a question about the extra two inspector days on short inspections. Yeah, um, it wasn't a part of our consultation proposals. As a question about whether that's something that we should consult on before introducing it next year. Um, that's an that's an interesting question. Um, uh, well, we don't we don't plan to consult on it. Um, we 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 we've made this decision in response to um, uh, the work that we've done to ensure that we can deliver a fair and equitable um, inspection regime to all local authorities. Um, were we to, were we have not to have increased the, um, the 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 tariff of inspectors. To short inspectors and inspections, and I say again, this is for the next round only. We don't anticipate that being the case. You know, three years hence, we will take it back to the, the team size as as was. We want to ensure that we're able to gather sufficient evidence the first time we make that judgment, so that no local authority is, is disadvantaged um, in the evidence that we've been able to take 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 into account. Um, so. I note your point about consultation. Um, I when I will reflect that back, um, you know, to senior colleagues here in Ofsted. Um, but that's the that's the rationale. Um, and, and as I say, it is a it is a temporary measure to make sure that we treat everyone fairly. Um, so we've got a question here about: Will we check how other departments in the local authority and third party organisations are supporting young people? Yeah, I, I think I think um, what I, I don't, I'm, th th this is reflected in the in in the criteria. Being able to pr appropriately and properly support care leavers cannot be a single agency responsibility. Um, for a starter, there is often a safeguarding element, and we know safeguarding can only be delivered in a in a multidisciplinary and multi agency way. Um, uh, that, how how and where young people are are accommodated um, uh, cannot be cannot be delivered in a single agency alone um, uh, manner. Um, it, it has to involve um, you know housing authorities uh, and and housing associations. But on the authority point, you know not 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 all councils have their own housing department. If you're a if you're an upper tier authority, that sits with your district councils. That's that's doubtless you know a more challenging partnership to manage than if you're in a unitary um, authority. So the, 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 the and the same is true in terms of the health response to to care leavers as well. So many facets of how successful a local authority are able to uh, to support care leavers well has to have a partnership element to it um, the, the the grade criteria reflects that uh, and, and that will be a, a component part of 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 how how inspectors inspect um, and we'll want to talk to you about 
about your partnership arrangements um, and where they're working well and or or not. Um, just as a as, as an aside, um, I, I've been involved since the um, the start of the joint targeted area inspection program, of course, which is our space for uh, having a more uh, multidisciplinary um, evaluation of of multi agency services. And and the practical reality is that to date. Um, we've never been able to move beyond the child protection space in order to do something of a joint nature. Uh, but should priorities and resources ever allow, there, there would be nothing stopping us doing a, a joint inspection around looked after children's experiences or indeed care leavers' experiences. So, you know, that's, that's something perhaps for the future. Um, but in the shorter term, it is certainly a part of um, our evaluation of this this new judgment. Yes, so um, thank you very much for your time. It, it's always a curious way to communicate with, uh, with, with people. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions. And um, uh, we'll say goodbye. Thanks very much.